Season's greetings, Sunday, uh, December the 27th, 2020. We welcome you on this first Sunday of the Christmas season. My name is Reverend Adrian Swanigan. My wife, First Lady Sister Janine Swanigan, pastor of the Mask Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, Lansing, Michigan. We pray everyone had a safe, joyous, Merry Christmas with your families. On behalf of the officers and the members of the Mask Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church family, we welcome you. Let us now worship together. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Let us now unite in this historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now approach the throne of grace, the invocation. Lord, we ask that you break through our weariness and are wondering during this holiday season. Lord, we ask that you renew us and bring back our thoughts from afar. For it is in keeping our mind stayed on you, Lord, that we are kept in perfect peace. Enable us to show that peace to a world in chaos and confusion. And all praise shall be returned unto you with thanksgiving. In the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. This morning's scripture reading will be coming from the Gospel of St. Luke, St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, starting with verse 21. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, 
starting with verse 21. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it reads, And when the eight days were completed for the circumcision of the Christ, child, his name was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were completed, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord a pair of two turtle doves or two young pigeons. Thus ends the reading of our scriptures, the scripture that I have read, the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, verses 21 to 24. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Just a few announcements that I'd like to share uh, before uh, our message. I, I want to thank uh, our missionary society here at Mass Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church under the leadership of uh, Sister Deborah Plummer uh, for encouraging our youth to participate in our connectional uh, Rossi T. Hollis uh, Christmas program. Uh, with the Missionary Society. I, again, I, I want to give kudos to all of our young people who participated. God bless you, you did an outstanding job. We, we, we commend you and thank you so much for what you have done. Again, I want to thank uh, Sister Deborah Plummer, uh, Brother uh, Tyrone Nelson, and our regional missionary president, Dr. Linda Logan. Also, I want to thank Dr. Logan for her dynamic message on last Sunday. Thank you so much. Also, again, many thanks to our Sunday School Department uh, for their contribution uh, with, along with the Family of Mask Memorial uh, in sending out gloves, hats, scarves, socks for the needy under the leadership of our Sunday School Superintendent, uh, Sister Evelyn Young. Thank you so much, Mask, for all your wonderful contributions and for all those who were given uh, gift cards uh, uh, during this holiday season, uh, people being helped, people being blessed. Uh, I thank you, Mask, for all that you're doing in our community. Keep up the good work that you're doing. God bless you. Also, I do want to thank uh, Sister Sharon Griffin for the dynamic Sunday School lesson on uh, this morning. Also, I do need to let you know that uh, we will be having a virtual watch night service, uh, the Mid-Michigan and Detroit District watch, virtual watch night service under the leadership of our presiding elder, the Reverend Dr. Philip D. Washington and the link will be going out uh, to that service soon. Also, as we bring uh, a close, as we come to a close on 2020, um, just be reminded that God has brought us through this pandemic. God has brought us through uh, this isolation and lockdown. Uh, if it, I don't know about you, but if it had not been for the Lord, on our side, where would we be? Uh, no doubt 2020 has been a very challenging year, but listen, I heard the psalmist say, I will look to the hills from whence come my help. My help comes from the Lord. And when we look back on 2020, we can truly say that God has been good. God has been better than good. God is so great. God is so loving. God is so kind that he has been merciful.
to us to bring us through another year. I am so happy and elated that if it had not been for him on our side, where would we be? Be encouraged. Uh, know that trouble don't last always. That's what the old folks told us. Trouble don't last always. That behind every dark cloud, there is a silver lining. You just keep your head up and know that God will make a way. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Stay encouraged. There are great things coming that's going to happen, that's going to take place in 2021 because God is in control. He is on the throne. God bless you. God keep you. Amen. And as we come now to the message, I want to again uh, lift up the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 20. And I want to read verse 22, the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, verse 22. Jesus presented in the temple. Now when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were completed, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. 
I'd like to use as a subject from this passage, Jesus presented in the temple. Jesus presented in the temple. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Jesus presented in the temple. The question often asked by many is, what is the purpose of the Old Testament? Um, what is the purpose of animal sacrifices? What, are the, what is the purpose of, of ceremonies and watch, washings and, and, and rituals? Um, why, why can't we just bypass all that and go straight to Jesus? The Old Testament, many feel, is outdated. Many feel the Old Testament is irrelevant. Many feel that the Old Testament is insignificant. Why not just start with Jesus? Well, in the story of Jesus being presented in the temple by his earthly parents, Mary and Joseph, it will teach us how to understand the Old Testament and its connection with the New Testament. The Old Testament teaches us the connection of animal sacrifices. It teaches us the ceremonies, and it teaches us the connection of the washings and the rituals uh, with Christ. If we don't understand the sacrifices and the ceremonies and the washings and the rituals in the Old Testament, then we will never un fully understand the purpose, the plan, and the person of Christ. It will be devastating to our faith. It, it will weaken our walk with the Lord. It will weaken our witness with the Lord. It will weaken our worship of the Lord. The scripture says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. You see, in our text, we see the earthly parents of Jesus, uh, Joseph and Mary, with the Christ child, their firstborn son. And uh, as they are winding their way up the road to the hill, hills uh, to Jerusalem, uh, with reverent steps, uh, they enter into the city of Jerusalem uh, and they head to the direction of Herod's temple. And it is believed by scholars that they entered the temple by the royal porch. And as they walk through in amazement between the two gigantic pillars which stood over 100 feet tall, which opened up into the court of the Gentiles that was 750 square feet, but as glory, glorious and as elegant as Herod's, Herod's temple stood, uh, Mary and Joseph did not come to the temple on a sightseeing expedition. Their purpose was to present their firstborn in the temple according to the law. They did not linger in the court of the Gentiles. They made their way up the flight of 14 stairs, which brought them into the terrace known as the Kale, which before them stood the great wall to the sanctuary, which only the Jews could pass. They then proceed uh, east uh, to the temple uh, and to the court of women where the females could go no further. And the second of the ceremonies of Christ would take place. So let's join Mary and Joseph 
and the baby Jesus, who is believed to be about five to six weeks old at this time. As we learn the connection between the Old and the New Testament. The first thing we learn about the connection of the Old and the New Testament as Jesus is presented in the temple is, first of all, the Old Testament is honored. It is honored. Uh, they obey the law. They are obedient to the commandments. They did not despise the commandments. They were obedient to the commandments. And so, first of all, they obeyed the commandment by circumcising Jesus, by his being circumcised. We read in St. Luke chapter 2, verse 21, and when the eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was also the name, the angel before he was conceived in the womb. So circumcision was an act of obedience to God, according to the Jewish law. Circumcision is the physical presentation of uh, the covenant community of God. God's covenant with Abraham described in the Old Testament. Circumcision is required for the inclusion of all Jewish males, eight days old and above, in the Jewish faith. So, right up front, God is saying, my son obeyed this command. And in uh, this obedience, he identifies with the covenant community of God. Circumcision is not laid down as a requirement in the New Testament. Instead, Christians are urged to be circumcised of the heart by trusting Christ and his sacrifice on the cross. This unites us as members of the body of Christ, regardless of what denomination we are regardless of whether we are Catholic or Protestants. If we identify with Christ, we are united in the body of Christ, according to Colossians 2, 11 and 12. The Old Testament is honored by circumcision. Amen. And that was uh, the first thing. The second uh, thing uh, and how it was, uh, uh, the Old Testament was honored by Mary and Joseph by purifying themselves. Circumcision and then Mary and Joseph purifying themselves. Verse 22 says, and when the days of her purification, uh, purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now, the ritual of purification as related to childbirth, uh, what, what was this all about? Well, every Jewish mother and father uh, who participated in the birth of their children or child was declared ceremonially unclean for 40 days after the birth of their child, which meant they were not permitted to take part uh -huh, in any religious ceremonies. They were to be isolated. They were to be on lockdown for 40 days. And, and this was to teach that no matter how innocent or how precious their child was, or their little child was, yet this child had come into an unclean world. And this meant all who came in contact with this birth 
were unclean. Um, Mary and Joseph, not Jesus, Mary and Joseph were unclean and had to go through the ritual of purification. Uh, Jesus was the only holy child ever born. Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. He was the firstborn, amen, and he was the only born perfect with no sin. Even though he was pure and clean, yet uh, he willingly identified with the impure and unclean. He was not impure. He was not unclean, but he identified with those who were. Uh, 30 years after he identified with the impure and unclean, he submitted to baptism. You see, John's baptism meant basically, I need my sins washed away. Well, Jesus did not need any sins washed away because he was sinless. Jesus is identifying with those who needed their sins uh, washed away. And he did it in obedience to the law. Okay, he did not come to do away with the law. He came to fulfill the law. So he identifies with us. And so um, Mary and Joseph were impure and had to go through the process of purification. Jesus identifies with us. He wants to be one with us. He is united with us. He is pure. We are impure. He is without sin. We are with sin. He identifies with us. And so uh, according to 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. And as we go along this Christian journey, it says over in 1 John uh, chapter 7, I'm sorry, chapter 1, starting with verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is just and faithful to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and the word is not in us. And in this passage, John is not writing to sinners. John is writing to saints. He is writing to those Christians who have accepted Christ. You see, now let me point out three key words or some key words, four key words in this passage. Uh, the first is sin. You see, sin. It means, sin means to miss the mark. You sin, I sin. It means to transgress. It means to disobey God's law. Amen. And if we say we don't have it, the truth is not in us. And then the second word that I'd like to highlight in this passage is blood or Jesus' atoning blood. Jesus' blood that washes away our sins. Amen. Jesus' atoning blood that came from Calvary. Amen. And then I'd like to highlight forgiveness, amen. If we, can, if we confess, amen, that he will forgive us. 
And so there is forgiveness, regardless of what you've done, regardless of, uh, of how you did it. If you ask God to forgive you, he will forgive you. And then confess. Then after you've confessed it, conf confess, confession is the other key word that I like to talk about. Confession. It, confess means to agree with the charges. I'm wrong. I, I did the evil. I did the sin. I, I, I committed it. I confess. You see? And then once we confess, we have sinned. Once we confess, we have transgressed. We will receive forgiveness. And not only will we receive forgiveness, according to this text, I'd like to highlight this word cleansing. Cleansing. And that word cleansing, it means not only in a spiritual sense, but a cleansing and a changing of our actual behavior going forward. We have been transformed. We, in other words, that sin that has been committed or that we've been having, we've, we've been struggling with, we are cleansed, amen, so that we might move forward and sin no more. The Old Testament is honored by circumcision. The Old Testament in this passage is honored by purification. And then the Old Testament is honored by dedicating, by Mary and Joseph, dedicating their firstborn child in the temple. Uh, now, now, this goes back to the Passover. You remember when the firstborn of the Egyptians were slain by the death angel? You remember that the firstborn of the children of Israel were spared because the blood of the lamb was put on the doorpost and the death angel passed over. Well, then God did two things after this, and you'll read this in Exodus chapter 12. So the Israelites would never forget this event. First, he instituted the Passover meal, the Passover meal, amen? And this was instituted in the law uh, so that Israel would never forget. That would be the Passover meal. And then the law of the firstborn, the law of the firstborn. And, and what is meant, although the firstborn ha had been spared, yet uh, they were to be dedicated over to the Lord as his servants. Every firstborn child of the nation of Israel, of, of their families, that firstborn child would be dedicated to the Lord. But God is merciful to the Israelites. And this would have caused a lot of confusion, if you will, in the families. And so God says, well, no, I, 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 you, you won't have to dedicate your firstborn." As servants, I'm going to consecrate the, Le the tribe of Levi to do that. They will be my servants. But I require you to present, present your firstborn in the temple and then present, pay five shekels of silver for the redemption of that firstborn son. Amen. So that was required that they were to bring their firstborn to the temple and then pay five shekels to redeem their firstborn. Well, in our text, we do not see Mary or Joseph paying five shekels to redeem their son. He is consecrated. He is dedicated as the Lord's servant. 
but he is not redeemed for five shekels. Because he is not to be redeemed, he is the redeemer. And then he is dedicated, already dedicated, to do as God has instructed. You remember 12 years later, uh, Jesus at the age of 12 declares to uh, Mary and Joseph, he says that I must be about my father's business because he is already dedicated as the Lord's servant. He is the Lord's servant indeed. The Old Testament is honored by circumcision. The Old Testament is honored by purification of Mary and Joseph. The Old Testament is honored by dedication unto the Lord as his servant. And then fourthly, uh, they are honored, they honored the Old Testament by sacrificing two pigeons, two pigeons. In verse 24, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. So, so at the end of this ceremony, Mary and Joseph were now cleansed of their impurity. They were released from their ceremonial lockdown and isolation. Uh, they could have offered a lamb. They could have offered two turtle doves. Or they, if they were poor, two young pigeons. Well, Mary and Joseph offered two young pigeons the poorest of sacrifice. And the scripture says, he was made poor that we might be rich. While the ideal of sacrificial system of the Old Testament seems strange to us today, the concept of payment or restitution is still one we should understand. I heard the hymn writer say it this way. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilt and stains. Lose all their guilt and stains lose all their guilt and stains. So, so let's bring this all together. The Old Testament is honored by the circumcision of Jesus. The Old Testament is honored by the purification of Mary and Joseph. The Old Testament is honored by dedicating Jesus in the temple to God. The Old Testament is honored by the offering of two young pigeons. Our Lord is presented in the temple. How about you? Won't you dedicate your life to Christ? right now? Won't you do it? I invite you. You can start off 2021 with a new life. I now invite you and extend the invitation to Christian discipleship. The door of the church is open. There may be someone today who does not know Christ as their Lord and Savior. The door is open. The scripture says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You have sinned and I have sinned, but sin has its consequences. According to uh, 
Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. He is the lamb that was slain for you. He shed his blood on Calvary for you. His blood washes away your sins. It says over in Romans 5, 8, that God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then it says over in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, we will be saved. If you believe that, please join with me in this prayer of salvation. Just bow your heads right there. And, and, and you can have a new life with Christ 2021. Let us pray. Say, Father, I ask that you forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, Welcome to the family of God. You are now in the family of God. Congratulations. The angels in heaven are rejoicing at your salvation. Please leave a comment below. Also, if you're living in the Lansing area, you need a church home. And you, do, you don't have a church home. You need a church home. Let me invite you to Mass Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. 5601 South Waverly Road, a warm, loving, and inviting congregation who will love you and embrace you in our church family. I welcome you. Come on board. God bless you. God keep you. Amen. Blessings to all who participated in this wonderful worship experience. Again, I want to thank Brother Tyrone for all of his hard work uh, as he produces uh, these uh, YouTube uh, recordings. And uh, again, thank him and uh, appreciate all of, uh, all of his sacrifice and, and the work that he does. Uh, much appreciation to the wonderful Mass family. Thank you for the gifts to your pastor and first lady. Uh, they are so, so appreciated. You made our Christmas even happier. God bless you. God keep you. Now let us receive the doxology and the benediction. Again, kudos to our musicians. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit to rest, to rule, to abide with you henceforth now and forever. Church of God said with one voice, Amen. God bless. Happy New Year.